We got the award as David Rick, Our father, we draw it here. I believe it's a good thing to come. That we will be doing more of our Thanks on before we get started. It's just quick. Um so council members, what I've what I've I've added to the table uh a proposed uh, an amended budget for you guys to look at over the next couple of weeks. Uh this is what I uh, about a minute in the budget and it's something that the uh legislative audit, Arkansas legislative audit uh encourages encourages us and recommends that cities do pretty much cities all around the state do it. It's not it's not a big deal unless you go through and find something that you don't agree with. And so basically what I've provided for you in the amended budget, uh, if you look at it, it says it's, it's going to say City of Helen West Helen General Fund. That's the first page. But it has all the funds that the city has within this amended budget. And that first column is, is the actual uh, expenditures, results, uh, revenue and expenditures for the 2023 fiscal year from January through December. In that second column, you'll see the adopted budget, the budget that you guys adopted, uh, I guess it was sometime in January of 2023. That third column is where you'll see the variance between the actual results and the budgeted, the adopted budget. And then that fourth column would be the amended budget, which actually equals the uh, expenditures. So that's what they typically do. They they typically make the uh, amended budget equal the actual expenditures. So I've given you a copy to review over the next couple of weeks. Uh, if you have any, and um, I ask that you uh, consider it for for passage to pass this amended budget. And if you have any questions, just give me a call. Um, I've also added the salaries. Uh, for all the employees during that year, during the 2023 fiscal year as well. Uh, just in case you had any questions about pay or who was paid what or, or what did, about overtime, anything like that. So I added that just uh, for some additional information, just in case you have any questions. So um, like I said, you can get in touch with me anytime you want. Just call me, email me, text me or whatever and try to answer any questions about any line items that you see, what's in the line items, uh, or anything like that. So, yes. You said a financial report. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got those. Yes, sir. These were not included. No, no sir. Uh, I had gone through all of them. No. Yes, so I just want you guys to kind of look through it and okay. see if you have any having questions about any line items. Like I said, just give me a call, and I can tell you what's actually in the line item. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. 
I see. Oh, and uh, I have a, have a resolution. I just haven't finished the resolution. I'm kind of working on the resolution. I'll get that to you the next day or two. I, I'm going to, I want to have the city attorney look at it first. So I'm working on that, and I'll get you the actual uh, resolution for you for your consideration as well in the next couple of days. Are you going to email that to yes. me? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll be looking for it. Okay. That's it. I'm finished. All right. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Ms. Miller? Here. Ms. Harris will be absent. Mr. St. Columbia? Here. Mr. Etherly? Ms. Davis? Here. Dr. Miller? Absent. Uh, he may be late, so that's two absent, four present. We have a quorum. Anything before we go to the agenda, Mr. Mayor? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have one item on the agenda, and that is the uh, new well that we're developing. And Mr. Ken Weiland, with Smith and Weiland uh, Surveyors and Engineers, is, is here along with Mr. Michael Alexander. And without any further ado, I ask him to come and make his presentation. Mayor Franklin, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Uh, I guess, first of all, I'd like to express appreciation for what I know is, you know, so it's, it's a rainy, stormy day, and it brought you out. I really appreciate y'all having this special meeting. Uh, the last meeting, I knew you had the state of the city address and a lot of other business, and I felt like this is a very important matter and want to be able to take as much time as I need to for y'all to make your, and, and I don't even know if there, what decisions need to be made. I'm not real sure exactly what, you know, what was done in the, the initial state. I, you know, I kind of been moving that y'all had declared a state of emergency so that we can move forward to try to expedite getting the new well in. Uh, I'm sure we all, everybody knows uh, why it's, it's critical that we move as fast as possible. Right now, you're operating on four wells, one of which I think is in a state of failure if it hasn't failed. Uh, and uh, Mr. Rose is going to be here. He can he can update you on that. But as far as I know, they're holding on. But everyone knows that we're one lightning strike. We're just one burp of one of the remaining three wells, and we're going to have real serious trouble. So I've been working uh, very hard to move this along as quickly as I can, and now we're ready to start executing some work and get that clock ticking down to when we can start putting water into the system and shut those old wells off. Now, what I've done, you've got a handout in front of you, and, and I, I, make, I always try to make them something like this myself, uh, little notes to keep me from rambling, because I'm real bad about doing that. You can just ask my children. Uh, so the first sheet may be just some notes. And all that is, is, it may not even make sense. It makes sense to me, but it's just something that you're looking at exactly what I'm looking at. But I thought just for starters, I would, would just kind of go through the package that you have in front of you, just so everyone, when I'm referring to different pieces and parts of it, uh, the first sheet, it says attachment A at the top. That is my latest opinion of probable project costs based on my estimates and and work with various contractors in pricing and it includes what hopefully is soon about to be a the formal proposal for the big ticket item and that is the well and uh, so that's this and we're going to be discussing it in just just a second i'm just going to go through here the next two pages you have or a, an official proposal or quote from Jones Hydro uh, Services, which is the well contractor. The next sheet is an area with some yellow lines on it, and it'll make a little better sense uh, when you look at the sheet after that. It's got red. You see the same thing in red. And what that is is that's the easements. That's the survey of everything we're going to need for you to have a fully functional maintainable well and to meet the requirements of the Arkansas Department of Health for the easements. They won't let you just stick the well down. There's certain things you have to have. Uh, then you get into excerpts from the, I didn't 
I didn't want to bore you with a lot of, of, of papers, so I've got excerpts out of the plans, the actual plans for the well and the site work and the, the utilities it's going to take to do this. Uh, the cover sheet shows you uh, there's four different schedules of work, uh, one being the site work, schedule two is the actual well, schedule three is the underground uh, utilities, uh, and four is the power that we're going to have to run from Entergy's line to the well, to power the well. Uh, so if you look on those plans, um, the second sheet of those plans down in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see a page number three. That shows you uh, what the actual plans are. That's what, that's, that's what you're, we're going to actually complete out there to make this a functioning world. Uh, if you flip back, and I know looking at black and white drawings is a little hard, but if you flip back to that little arrow with the yellow lines on it, you'll notice the same shape. But you can see in that arrow, you can see the ball field. So that, that gives you a better idea of where the access roads and the well are going to be located. The, the access will be off of the bypass on the north end uh, of the of the Boys and Girls Club Sports Complex. It is a complex. It's a, it's a baseball field, a softball field, all-state regulation, and a soccer field. Many people don't realize there's a soccer field back there. Uh, so we, uh, when the health department uh, came in, they, they liked my initial site, and when it got back to Little Rock, somebody back there didn't like one aspect of it, and so we had to move it. And so you'll see that little square right here on your sheet. That little square is the actual location of the well. And the Boys and Girls Club will give you, hopefully are going to give you a, a 30 by 30 feet title uh, deed to that, which is where the physical well will actually be located. Is, it, is, is that the lighted area there where the ball field is? The lighted area on the left of the... Right, you can, you can, see, you can see the baseball fields yeah, this is the baseball, this is softball, and the soccer is right here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of between them. Yes, sir. We're trying to keep it out of the way. Yeah. And in fact, I located the well is behind the left field foul pole of the girls or the of the, the softball field. Directly behind, directly behind the foul pole. In between the, the it's, it's between the, the softball field fence and where the people and players would be on the sidelines of the soccer field. So it won't be, it won't be in the way of either, okay. of either of those. We're going to have a fence around all that, aren't we? We'll put a fence around the well. Yeah. And really and truly, that's something that the Boys and Girls Club, uh, at, well, we're going to put a fence around it because the health department's going to need it. But what type of fence, you know, at first I thought something like you got out here on Phillips Street, but that yeah. wrought iron fence, uh, uh, unfortunately, a softball will go through it. So we, we may end up with a chain link, and I'm sure, you know, we can we can work uh, out, that out with Boys and Girls Club. But it, it will be, you know, if you have to have a well, which they understand we have to have a well, it'll be attractive. It's not going to be a nuisance or, or look unattractive. Uh, you know, again, there's not a whole lot of places after I got to looking into it that we could put a well that you wouldn't have to run an extensive amount of raw water line. And this raw water line got a lot more expensive when we had to move that well 300 feet north. It got a lot, a lot more expensive. I, I had it closer to the raw water line, the existing raw water line. So, you know, we, we worked real hard to put it in and put it in where the health department was not going to be concerned about any standing water or any drainage. They don't want anything that could get down the casing of that well and contaminate it. So, so the health department, uh, uh, and, that, and now, now I'm going to kind of move into my, into my little um, uh, outline there, if I can find it. The health department has officially given approval uh, to that well site. Isn't it amazing? I can stand here and never move, and now I can't find that. There it is. 
So that, that shows you the package. So uh, the, let me give you the status of where we are. Uh, the well location has been officially and formally approved by the Arkansas Department of Health, subject to two things. One, they want to approve approved plans and specifications. And two, they're going to require the easements and the, right, the, the rights to where that well is and that 100-foot radius that they want around that well. It's called a wellhead protection. You can't put any sewer in it. You can't do any hazardous materials. You can't do anything in that 100-foot radius that could possibly contaminate that well. Well, you know, one of the best, one of the safest places you can be is out in the middle of the ball field. Yeah. You get some Pepsi Cola and popcorn. There's never been any kind of oil company or, or uh, uh, service station or anything anywhere in that area, so that should no. be pretty safe. Oh, it's out it, right. It, it's yeah. it's as far as it. it I've, I've looked and I haven't found anything. If somebody shows me something, but yeah. I, I'm, I've I've checked pretty closely, and I actually also corresponded a good bit with the Department of Health geolog geologist about uh, some concerns that had been expressed, and and I feel very very good that we're we're in a a, a real good spot. Uh, and the other advantage to that spot is that it brackets it in between two of your existing wells that we have the information when they drill those wells, we've got the geology on those two wells. So we very, we're very comfortable that we're not going to have a surprise down there because we're not going to put on a test well. We're going to drill a test hole and they'll pump that water and they'll check that water. And from that, they'll determine if they can get, you know, what production we can get out of that well. A test well would probably cost you another fifty thousand, seventy-five thousand dollars. But we feel comfortable enough since we're between well number eight and the old well number nine, and we've got the what they call the e logs, the geology on those two wells. We feel comfortable that we have a that we know what's down there to the best of our ability. And that's after a long and a lot of conversations with with Jones. Uh, and so I, I feel I feel good about this well location. Uh, so the well location has been approved. The construction plans and specifications uh, for all schedules of work are complete, uh, including the access roads, the well site, the raw water line uh, location. And those plans and specifications have been submitted to the health department and are pending approval. And I don't anticipate any major surprises there if we get one and we'll, we'll just have to adjust. Um, the uh, site layout survey, uh, as you can see, what I what I flipped by a minute ago, the red that was completed by us. It's got all the descriptions. I've I've I dropped off a copy to uh, uh, Mr. Andre, and I've also sent a copy to Boys and Girls Club. And now I've just got to get them. I just got to get all the, the two lawyers together. Now they need to they need to go ahead and start giving the deeds to these accesses. There's access easements, there's a utility easement. Uh, there is a uh, the the actual 30 by 30 site for the well, and then there's the 100 foot, that circle you see is the 100 foot wellhead protection. All of that has to be executed for the health department to give us a final approval that you can start drawing water out of the ground. Um, and then the city forces have actually gone out and cleared the trees and things out of the way of what will be the overhead electric extension from well number eight west to a point that we will then go underground into the well. We don't want to put, well, I don't think you can put overhead electric out there because you've got the big light stands for the ball fields and you just don't want that out there. So we're going to go underground to the well and then back up with the power that will go into the controls that will that will will run the, the well run the controls uh, so uh, they've already done a real good job with getting that cleared out of the way uh, and we're working with energy now uh, mike's been coordinating with the with energy and uh, and at least one electrician uh, for what we need to do there uh, also yeah, uh, we had a little surprise, and, uh, and that's that's one thing I need everyone to understand. Uh, there might be a little bit of fluid uh, to this. It might be a little bit, might have a few little changes. Uh, last week, apparently there was a wash. Uh, once he got all the the brush cleared, they found a little wash and it exposed the existing pipe. Now we had already dug up the pipe at well number eight, and it was twelve inch, cast iron. 
Well, in this wash, it's sure here's a, an old fix in the well that that line was the old asbestos cement pipe. So, you know, there's just going to be little things like that that will come along. Uh, but we don't need to, I think we're at a point, we don't need to wait on these little minor details that we can proceed on now because we need to get the things ordered and moving to actually get that well in the ground and get it to where we can hook it in and get off of those old wells. That's, that's where your exposure is, those old wells. Any questions at this point? And then we'll move into... The meat, of the meat and potatoes. If there's any questions about the plans or anything like that. Okay. Now, here is where, again, um, I am moving uh, under the assumption that we are going to waive the bidding as an emergency. I don't know if that was declared the first time, how we're going to do that. But my recommendation, you have a proposal from Jones Hydro. Now, Jones Hydro has been working with Mr. James. He, he has been out there working on these wells now for what, about six months, trying to keep everything, bailing wire and, and, and band-aids, trying to keep things running. And he's familiar with it. Uh, I've, I've, I've discussed this with him thoroughly. Uh, he, he has already, he's seen the plans and I feel that his price is comparable to a, a similar well, almost exact well that we did in another location, finished it up uh, less than a year ago. So I think his price is good. And so uh, my first recommendation tonight is that we, that this council consider approving the proposal that's in your package from Jones Hydro in the amount of $955,200. And that includes the well and the controls of everything that's associated with that well. And he even, he even includes a potential. We're still trying to determine whether or not we're going to have a 200 horsepower motor, which, you know, or 150 horsepower motor. If we can make it work with a 150 and still get 2,000, you know, we'll do it. If not, uh, you know, the only other thing we could do is say, hey, instead of 2,000, uh, if we can definitely get 1,800, you could live with 1,800. My target has been 2,000. I think it's in the best interest of the city to get 2,000, <clears throat> but he has a deduction in there if we back that motor down. So that's all included in here already. Um, so that was my first recommendation tonight. And, and let me tell you why this is important tonight, why it was so important to have a, a special call meeting. When when I started in on this, I started looking at what are the things that are going to take the longest? What's the critical path? What's the what's the critical element? And as I and what I determined, what I found out is the actual pump itself, the actual not 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 necessarily the motors are available, the pieces and parts are available, the screens are available, but that pump could take six to eight weeks. And these well drillers are not the fire department, they're not just sitting out there waiting for somebody to call. They've got their rig scheduled. And Mr. Jones has, has got his rigs reserved for a, another week or two to give the city the chance. If y'all can go ahead and approve him, then he's going to schedule his rigs to come to home. And when he starts, he's going to work 24 hours a day while he's drilling. He knows we need an extra. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons I'm recommending him. He, 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 more than anyone else, recognizes how critical how time critical this work is. And so uh, it's not that that pump could take six to eight weeks, but also having those rigs move here instead of having to wait for them to come off another job is also critical. So the idea is that we're going to start the test hole, start doing the things that he can do while that pump is in route and while we're finishing up with the approval from the health department and while we're getting the easements for the, the, the site. So anyway, if there's any questions on that item. Uh, Before we finish, Adam, is there a motion to approve a quote from Jones Hydro Services to still our office for $955,200 for the scheduled step, two step of the new well? Um, Mr. Edson and Mr. Miller seconds the motion in discussion. Just following on the conversation we had, was just, uh, the city attorney have, will have to prepare an ordinance 
So this is kind of just one address. And so they know we're ready to move forward. But we can have one next to that we can approve the order, the actual order. Thank you for the discussion. Madam Clerk, can we call the roll, please? Ms. Davis? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Dr. Miller? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Well, so as far as we can move out. He can, if he if he's ready to order his pump, he can go ahead and order it. Or do we need to wait till Tuesday? I mean, good to go. Okay, that's all I need to know. Well, I think that takes care of number two. I think it goes without saying that I'm I'm ready to, to move out with this well well drill. Okay. Uh, move number three. Move to number three. Yeah, move number three uh, is to is basically to allow the water department. Uh, the one thing I don't have is I don't know what energy may or may not charge you. They're going to have to put down two or three new poles, and and they've got to come up with these big transformers. Now, the transformers are also a potential time problem, but I just have a feeling that there's a gentleman in this room that could probably help me with the, with the governor's office. Uh, the transformers it takes to run a 200 horsepower motor can sometimes have a long lead, but more than likely we can probably overcome that one. The well pump is a different story. Those transformers, I think we can get some help on that. So uh, I don't know if it needs any action. It's just that Y'all need to make sure that the water department, whoever has the authority to sign whatever they need to sign with energy so they can start doing whatever they have to do. Thank you, Janet. Um, and I'm doing a water department to make any arrangements necessary with energy for the condition of the age. OHE for, for well number eight to the new site. Is there any kind of like taking any action on that? So moved. Mr. Ethel, so moves. Sure. Mr. St. Clement second the motion. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, you call the roll, please. Mr. Etherly? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Dr. Miller? Yes. Ms. Davis? Yes. Mr. St. Columbia? Yes. Five yes, one absent. The fourth thing is the and we discussed this in that in that first meeting, and, and I think I use some Ken Wallen fancy term hybrid bids or whatever, but basically what that is for the other schedules of work, which are certainly, you know, uh, not as much as the well. The raw well water line is a different UT. The well guy doesn't do that. The electrical, nobody, you know. So uh, I'm going to do what, what I call, a, it's, it's basically I will get more than one quote from them for those items. It won't be advertised. You, know, you, you got four, you got four utility contractors that are going to do it anyway. And I'm going to try to get at least two prices for those particular items on a sealed quote fill. And I'll tell them, hey, you got so many, you got get me an envelope with a with a proposal in it, sealed, and then we'll open it and get it approved. I'll bring it to the council for approval. We got a little time on that, so it gives me more time uh, I, once I get the well cut. So, so number four, the approved to proceed with the invitation seal quote process for work site schedule one, raw, wa raw water line schedule two, and power lines in schedule five. It, it, what's the council pleasure, Mr. I move to approve. Mr. Evan moves to approve. Sure. Mr. St. Clement second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Dr. Miller? Yes. Mr. St. Clemmy? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Anthony? Yes. Ms. Davis? Yes. Five yes, one absent. Mr. Wilder, anything else you need for us tonight? No, sure. Anything else you need from us tonight? No. No, thank you. Uh, and and I, I really appreciate, first of all, the, the, the support this council has given me. Uh, uh, this, this, as y'all know, it's just critical for the city, and and I applaud you for for what what you're doing here. And all we can do now is just keep our fingers crossed that we can get get this thing done before something happens out there. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate this special call meeting. One one question that the audience may have is where does this likely put us in terms of the finished product? Six to eight weeks. <laughs> now. Or, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. To to actually have a a 
well Absolutely. that's going to be putting water into the system yes sir. and then you mentioned that asbestos line is that something we're going to have to replace well you know we, we, we got a big product right now doing that but that that line is there for all these years it, it would be a good idea and, and we're not real sure how much of it is asbestos they right. they're digging another uh, spot up out there we don't know if that was just a fix don't know why but it could be and if it is, you know, the, the line itself is not necessarily a problem. Uh, is, is the, the biggest problem is when workers cut into that line and they start fracturing it. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, you don't want it in your system. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't... With, with, do we leave that instead of valves for a treatment plant? No, sir. I'd put it it'd be way down the priority list. It's, it's been there for 50 years already. I compliment you on how fast you have to work on this thing. You do a good job. Your staff you. getting this all together. I know a lot of stuff they don't have sitting on the shelf. No, so you have to look at where it was and how to get it. No, so well, and and I think we're going to be able to be able to bracket it in between the wells. Yeah. I mean, you just I, 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 I'm, I'm just you about to us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ronnie. So we'll go to Mr. Saeed Rose. Is that what you? Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Chief of Staff. Good to see you all as always. Um, I'm just going to pick up immediately where Mr. Ken left off. Uh, we are not out of a state of emergency. Um, I'm going to start with the bad news. Not only are we barely holding on to well nine? We're barely holding on to well 10 as well. And so well 10 is surging. Uh, we're still producing a little bit from well 10, but that's gonna go down as well. And so the primary focus right now is to stop loss. We're still at about 600 gallons loss, and we need to get that number down to at least 300 gallons loss as soon as possible. Is that on the Helena side or the West Helena? We're, we're just talking about West Helena. Yes, sir. I'm going to not talk about Helena this evening because that's a whole nother conversation, a whole nother ball game, uh, talking about that system. But for West Helena, uh, we're looking at basically you're still around the ballpark of 600 gallons lost. Uh, give or take between 600, 550, 60. It kind of fluctuates. But what we're doing is stand on top of these current leaks that's popping up because there's new leaks happening. Um, so just for West Helena, we're looking at about um, roughly 15 to 20 leaks. Um, a lot of these leaks are valve leaks, fire hydrant leaks. And so it's going to require heavy lifting on just packing these valves, getting these fire hydrants either turned off or repaired, and constantly stand on top of these new leaks. And so this is something that is we've been doing consistently uh, since the primary crisis where we didn't have any water for two weeks and we had to basically knock out about 80, almost to 100 leaks immediately. The goal is to stay on top of what we're losing so we can maintain what we have. Okay. And so for this to, for this to happen, we need all hands on deck and focus on what we have right now, because as we're going into the warmer months we're going into the summer the water usage is going to go up people are watering their grass um this etc we're using more water in their homes water usage is going to go up and so right now it seems like we're in a better state because we're not seeing the leaks that we usually see we're not you know we're having pressure and most of the system a decent pressure but we have to realize that this is because we did what we did during the beginning of the year. And so we have to really, um, at the end of the day, not let up, off, you know, the quick response time on the new leaks that we're seeing and, and not kind of get detoured on other things that's happening, you know, to where we have to keep this loss down because we're not, we're not, we're not producing enough water. That's just the reality of it. And so it's kind of warms my heart to hear six or eight weeks. Uh, but the reality is that anything can happen in between those six to eight weeks. Our system. Okay. Yeah. No, please, man. Um, we in the city training was discussing the, the, the council previously. We had uh, some guys out here working on our hydrants, fixing our hydrants. Oh, yeah. And we, we never got a full plan of what they did, but most of our 
hired us in the smoke administration. We had black garbage bags. And once they got these, someone was knocked over. And we, it was a company that came in and did all our work on those fire hydrants. Am I correct, Mr. Anthony, Miss Mr. Davis, and Mr. St. Columbia? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember we the, the, we paid a company what fifty thousand dollars, twenty five or fifty thousand dollars to come along and, and give us a report on all the water hydrants because remember Mr. Turner, someone had a black garbage bag on them. It was a discussion, but we already got a full plan of what ha happened in that situation. So um, we probably need to look at that because some guys, some of those hydrants still right now today. Have a black garbage bag, and I think we we paid twenty five to fifty thousand dollars for this company to come in and look at those hydrants, and replace the hydrants. Yeah. I think some of them just kept some of them off, and, and there's no hydrant. Yeah. So that may be something you all need to uh, and we hope you know, know where to look to see who who was the company we paid the body. You remember this when we paid when we came out of the uh, company we moved where we got. So we made, we made plans to use a company that Mayor Smith wanted to come in for. I'm, I'm saying twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. And so some of these, as you know, Mr. Rose, do you see some fire hydrants have a black garbage bag over? Um, not only do we have fire hydrants with black um, bags over them, we have fire hydrants without black bags over them, and they do not work. And so, um, so I would like to get that information right. uh, about that contractor because they didn't share that information. With the water department, yeah. have to do that all over again. To remember, we actually paid the company to still to come in once they got through to pay the fire hydrant once they were done. You are, Ms. Daly, Mr. Anthony, Ms. Singer, you all remember? I'm not going to think about it because I still see, uh, and it's not the blame game, but I just want folks to see that we, we, everything that was given to us, we voted on it to make sure it happened, but those were some issues. Uh, we had some water, some uh, fire hydrants shooting, shooting out water. Uh, Mr. Alexander, if I'm not mistaken, remember some of at some of those hives we had that was just gushing of water. You can see the water around the base of it. So we had a company under the former administration. I voted for that to make sure they came in to look at our fire hydrants. And uh, I think after the heat got on, we just lost focus of that. But uh, that's something we'll... that, that is definitely an issue um, because not only is that information we need. Critically, fire department needs that information. Right. They need to know if fire hydrants are not working um, at all times. Mr. 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 I, I believe, in, and the city clerk can correct me if I'm, I'm if I misspeak, but I, I believe they gave us a list of the hydrants. Is it? I think they gave us a list of the hydrants, the ones that they repaired, and the ones that. They didn't repair. So I think we have a list. Oh, that'd be okay. great. Yeah, that'd be I think great. We okay. <laughs> if not, we need to definitely get that from them. Uh, but that information would be vital, not only to um, the emergency situation I'm talking about, but for Helena as well. Because this, like I said, this, there was a lot of fire hydrants that was not, uh, it, the process is the bag of fire hydrants that's not working, but we just have a lot of them that's not, actually not bagged. And we don't find out until we're actually testing the fire hydrant or flushing or working on something to where we see that fire hydrant is not working. And so I'm trying to make sure that I'm letting the fire department know and they can maintain an inventory on what fire hydrants not to go to support that emergency. Have you collaborated with them on, so we can have a plan of what fire hydrants need to be flushed, like what fire hydrants do or do not work? I think we, if we all get some plan on this so we can, so that we can understand, at least put some in the paper, let people know, what hydrogen would be flushed because some people sometimes have has brown water because the hydrogen had been flushed in a while. Yeah. So I, that, man. So when we did the isolation during the um during the emergency time earlier this year, uh when we isolate these lines, um there's going to be basically the end of service lines are going to have that build up. And so we've actually been actively dealing on that um throughout the work days, pretty much frequently to where certain customers are going to still have situations going on that we need to make sure that we get directly to their service line to do a proper blow off to clear their line. And that is definitely something we have to keep in mind if we ever, um, not going to wood, it doesn't happen, but if we run into situations where we're not producing enough water, we have to isolate, we have to keep in mind that we have to flush as well. And so now the thing is, is we always have um, pretty much a maybe a two time year uh, flush 
for both systems, mm -hmm. um, but we're not able to do that for West Helena right now. We're not producing enough water. And so what we're gonna be doing is basically flushing the end of the line um, for samples and other things that we need to do for West Helena, but we will be scheduling a proper system flush for Helena. Um, and it's basically what a flush looks like is hitting the end of all of the lines of the system and just doing that basically um, twice a year to make sure you know we're not having those discoloration and, and different situations that we have with the water. But for West Elena, we have to take a special precaution because we're just, you can't flush the whole system like we usually do over there because we can't handle that water loss at all. And so that kind of brings me back to um, just making sure that we're getting uh, the support and resources we need to stay on top of these leaks, uh, which includes contractors right now, um, just yesterday, I was actually trying to spot the line that we're talking about with the uh, asbestos and actually looking at how long that section is. And we need to expose that line, but literally as we were digging that up, our backhoe broke down. And so I have three machines. They are all inactive right now because one is getting worked on, another one needs to get sent off, and I need tracks for another one. And I don't have money to do this. And so this is, uh, this is something that we need to really look at just putting the light on, we got to have the machines to do the work that we need to do. So, we, so I'm pretty sure Chief Staff, right or wrong, correct me. Do the street sanitation have a track code that we can let them? Do? So, so what we'll do, we'll transfer that track code over to you all. You all can pick that up so you all can get ready. And once you can get yours in the shop, uh, that's what the team is. One kind of guess that, that's definitely so you can pick that up to you so you can get whatever you need. Okay. Just, just come. Okay. Okay. Now that, that's that's the music to my ears because uh, like I guess they're gonna be uh, constantly looking at. Yes, we have leaks in Helena. I don't want to get too much on that tonight uh, to take away from the special meeting. But we just want to cut basically from fifteen to twenty weeks, and I'm adding a couple on there. Uh, we need to get that number almost down to zero. And technically, in any system, even if it's a brand new system, that's impossible. All right. But we have to. Um, not only focus on getting these visible leaks that we're seeing that's popping up, um, a lot of them are service lines and, and just our galvanized lines that's leaking. Um, in our valves that we've been exercising doing isolation, we need to basically get it to where we're looking at being able to focus on the visible leak detection, because right. we do have that as well. And Arkansas Rural Water has played a great hand on just providing the equipment that we need to track the leaks that we're not seeing. And so cutting this number down from 600 to about 300, that's that's going to be our two-month goal while this well is in process. So the the, the equipment that rural water, when I was out in the field with you all, the rural water had a machine that's a GPS to locate the lines and tell you where the leak was. Do you have one of those? Do they, they should let, let us borrow the machine and do we try to get uh, I'm the closest thing to that machine that we'll okay. ever see. <laughs> so, um, but, so actually, that's very, very expensive equipment, but I did get some quotes on prices of that, and we like kind of talk about that offline because I think that'll help us a lot. Um, just being able to have the simplest version right. of that machine to do some leak detection ourselves. And I think, I think, Council, that is that is a good piece of equipment. Uh, I was I was out in the field with them with rural water. Was Mr. Hughes out there? And they were showing us how how and it, it's like an ultrasound. They put this thing on, on the line and show it tells you where about the leak is and how much water you lose. Those are things that, that since I've been there, we need to invest in with the water department so that when it's a leak, we can know where it is. It's not being out in the looking for leaks. Those are the, the investments that we need to make in our water department. To oh, yes. Water department. Particularly for this uh, aging system, right. that is going to be critical moving forward as we're doing, you know, adding new lines and doing, uh, getting, getting, getting rid of old lines uh, and checking valves and finding valves, all of that is essential. And so just to kind of add to that, there's a, um, just a, you, we're talking about sonar, that's a little bit more expensive, but there's just literally a listening device um, that we can tap onto a valve or we expose the line to actually hear the loss of flow from that particular line. Mm -hmm. And that's something a little bit more affordable that we can possibly move forward with getting. That's going to help us a lot, you know, just while we're dealing with this. Hey. Yeah. And we moved up, I don't know if you know the mayor, chief staff may know, have we moved up on that the grand list when we were? Yeah. Number two. Two now on the list, huh? And so that's kind of brings me to my my next point is um, 
the things that we need to be doing while we're working on um, loss and leak detection is actually getting the West Helena treatment plant up to par to be able to handle um, the amount of pressure that are coming to the system from the new well. And so we have valves that we need to get replaced in that plant. We have air leaks that we're working on right now in that plant. And uh, we need to make sure that we're basically crossing all our, our, our T's and dotting our I's when it comes to the treatment plant to where it can support the influx of more water coming into the system, including the distribution system of hitting our trouble areas where we're dealing with the most leaks at. Um, and so replacing, you know, if we're able to uh, get this, this grant on just replacing two inch lines, that is critical to happen, you know, in a timely manner within the next six to eight weeks. So if that's possible. So what's your, what's your plans? Have you, have, do you have a plan so that we can put together so we can get that package up right fast? I think a uh, former water manager, Kevin Murdoch, is some valves on the floor at the treatment plant in Helena. Is those valves also go to the... Oh, uh, so that, that, that'll be for Helena. Um, and I'm going to try not to talk about Helena tonight, but uh, we, we're basically going to have to order the valves that we're needing for West Helena. And so I have all of that ready, invoices ready, and I'll be getting with uh, Miss Sandy. So if you, can put that, if you can put that on Tuesday's meeting, we can go ahead and address that. Okay, yeah, yeah, I have all of that information ready so we can move forward. So that. so they have knowledge of it. If you could get them and their stuff to them by the Friday so they can have a chance to study, we can try to go ahead and move forward with that with those issues to take care of that. And, and it is a time-sensitive thing, just like with ordering the parts for the pump. It takes time for these, uh, these valves to get in, so... Thankfully, we got the right information we need now. And sooner we get moving forward with that and actually placing that order for that event. If you submit your plans, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll, we'll do whatever it needs to do to make sure you're successful. The water problem is successful. We see how we move forward so, so fast tonight to take care of the water issues. So you submit those plans before the week is out and we can have a chance to study and feel comfortable with it. I think we can move forward there on Tuesday. Okay, consider it done. And so, now, with focusing on the distribution side and the treatment side, I, I want to mention this just on a personnel level uh, because response time is the, is the greatest thing um, in our repertoire right now because, yes, we have equipment failing and literally, um, I'm just going to back up a little bit. So for the Helena system and the West Helena system, there was usually, um, and, and Mike, you can kind of correct me if I'm wrong, there was usually about 14 people in the field working on the system, seven on both sides, okay. maybe a little less, a little more, give or take what was going on. And so, but right now we're operating with seven people in the field, and that's including two plant operators, myself, a couple of new staff, and a, a few senior staff that's been holding on getting things done that's operating across this whole system. And so what I want to bring to light today, not to take away from this emergency, but we also have to always focus on this water leaving our system, which is our wastewater side. And so I have every pump station I have in Helena and West Helena needs work. I basically have one pump running in each station if the station is running at all. And so for my personnel, my staff, I'm directing them a lot to not only focusing on what we need to get done on the distribution side, but working on these pump stations because it requires heavy lifting. We have parts, we have things that we need. We have to order a lot of stuff, but actually having them available and working on this is critical. But at the same time, we cannot let off the priority, <laughs> you know, because these are all priorities which fix the need leaks. And so this is just a, I want to put this clearly out so we can understand, you know, just the need of contractors, the need of help across the board on getting things done. So what I was going to suggest to you, if you uh, get, a, get a plan together, with some some con some, some just some contractors temporarily get these issues fixed mm -hmm. to teach your guys show you guys a plan get us some plan together and let's package this together get how many hours going to take for, for to get your pumps together mm -hmm. package this together let's go ahead and start moving forward with that so mm -hmm. you, you, you need your guys uh some some new time have some contractors come in and show them get this stuff done mm -hmm. quicker but propose it have a plan together so that all this comes together so when Tuesday night comes they can be abreast and ready to go to move forward. We don't want to, we don't want to hire any employees until our stuff is up and running. You get you some contracts in here to get in and get this stuff done, get it done and move fast. Because we, 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 we try to get this thing done, so get people in here as quick as you can so we can get this thing together. There's no need just, just lagging us. So find some contractors who are willing to come in and help us move 
quickly as possible with this. So we won't have these issues. And we just, and the council knows Tuesday night they'll be ready, have some raw numbers. So when you come, they'll be ready to go and know how much this is going to cost us, how many posts we look, how many posts we're looking to fix. So how many posts you have? Um, so in, entirely, um, Ooh, we have, uh, I'm gonna say 15 pump stations. I'm including the small stations and we're selling them, uh, we're selling the ponds. And then um, we have nine uh, running stations in Helen. Okay. And so these, these every day needs work on. But I, I present all of this because uh, I've actually been working on all of it and it's kind of in motion already. And so uh, I don't have no problem presenting that information to you and the council. The information, the quick and the act that will be the seal of paper so they can feel confident that they vote for the associate. And the, the faster you give it to them, the faster they'll vote for it. They need to see it, and that's something that they're comfortable. So I think all, uh, everything you presented tonight give us a, a quick rundown so we can be ready for Tuesday. So it can be a showdown Tuesday night for water. So we'll be, we'll, they'll be ready to do whatever you need to submit it so they can understand it and be ready. Sounds good. So, and, um, and so and you made a very good point as we're um, just on the wastewater side, as we're getting these pump stations up to par and getting, uh, let's just say, both pumps running, um, even with now, yes, we're going to be able to hire a couple more people and, and get some more trained staff, but we'll be able to maintain these stations um, as long as they're running the way they need to be running. So right now it's like we're, we're having to do more now to do spend less late. Right. Let me put it like that. Yeah. So, and then that includes us getting off these bypass pumps and and you know this this excessive spending that we're having to do just to keep things running. Yeah. It, 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 at that point, once once we get the everything up and going, the the guys we already have in the water probably can't maintain the system. This is what's been happening for years. Nobody has been maintaining the system. So, so we are too far gone now, and here we are replacing everything. But you want to make sure your staff is well paid, well educated in water. And we'll put somebody who's been on the, uh, uh, on the field for you to uh, handle the business to come in and handle the water department. So we'll make sure we, we got everything we need and handle quickly. So, Mr. Reyes, you got anything else for us? Um, no, that's it. Anyone want to have any questions for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rose. All right, thank you all. Mr. Bennett. I'm Bennett Rose. Thank you, Ken and Mike. Uh, this will be the, the final thing. Uh, race study. I called and spoke with Dennis with Arkansas Rural Water and said he was going to try to get started on us sometime this week. Okay. And he'll get it completed as soon as he can. And at that point, there was nothing he needed from us. We were just waiting on him. Um, and we submitted that a while ago. And then we got one thing that's going to come on the agenda Tuesday, but we can probably deal with it tonight, and you can probably give us our ongoing approval so we don't have to keep bringing it back. But, you know, we got 100 to 200 customers on Barn Lexa Water, and we're paying them for that water. And the last invoice is like 53, almost 5,400. is above the $5,000. And what I'd like for you to do is just authorize us to pay Barton Lexa, whatever the deal is, until we no longer use them. So we don't have to keep coming back for that. But we got one coming Tuesday. If you deal with it tonight, then we don't have to. But that's that's it on that. So, so explain that. So um so that that means that like these are people who are supposed to be on our water, on our water line, but they're you like right from the food clubs back to basically like airport road. Okay. Uh, those West Tallinn water customers are getting water from Barn and Lexa Water Association, and they're using a master meter to meter the amount of water that's going through the meter uh, to those customers. And then we pay them their master meter fee, which is about $5,400 for the last billing cycle. Uh, the first cycle was about $4,000 or so, dollars, and I believe we paid them like a $3,000 deposit because uh, she had estimated it would be about $3,000 a month, but our usage has been above, I guess, what Ms. Letty's estimate has been. And I was just trying to simplify it because if it's going to be ongoing until we get through this well situation, let's just pay Barton Lexa as the bill comes to and keep going on, on that. So what you need from us tonight is approval to pay the Barton water bill. Pay Barton water bill, whatever, whatever it is as it comes to. Yeah, that's that's my water. I need y'all to keep it out. <laughs> I'm so moved. This is this thing called moving. Uh, uh, Mr. Waterman, Miss Day, the second the motion in discussion. Mm -hmm. Madam.
Can we please call them? Yes. 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 All of us in my neighborhood. Thank you. Mr. Cyclone, Mr. Cyclone.